Those old doors can be a real problem if they break loose in a strong wind. They can bang away until the door itself falls apart. A strong spring usually takes care of the problem. The spring pulls on the door, keeping it clamped tightly shut. Bolts and cap screws keep parts clamped together too. Although a loose or improperly tightened fastener can cause a lot more damage than a flyaway door, most fasteners must be carefully tightened to exact specifications, which requires a torque wrench. But in some cases, John Deere technical manuals call for more than just a simple torque measurement. For example, the manual may tell you to tighten the cap screw to 55 foot-pounds, and then to turn the cap screw an additional quarter turn, or to be more precise, 90 degrees plus 10 minus 0 degrees. We call this the torque turn method for tightening fasteners. This program will explain why you must use the torque turn method on some fasteners, and it will also show you how to use the torque turn method. But what does tightening a cap screw have to do with a door spring? A cap screw is a hard, inflexible piece of metal. A door spring bends and stretches. What do they have in common? More than you may think. For one thing, they're both elastic, meaning that they'll stretch and then snap back to their original length. Of course, the spring stretches much easier than the cap screw. It takes a lot of force to stretch a cap screw, but it can be done. The amount of elasticity a cap screw has depends on its size and the material it's made of. When stretched, both the spring and the cap screw pull back, exerting force on their ends. Now, this force is called tension. The tension they exert is what enables both springs and cap screws to hold things together. An unstretched spring exerts no tension and does little to keep this door from flying open. But when stretched, the spring keeps the door tightly shut. It exerts tension. The same with this connecting rod cap screw shown here. When threaded loosely, the cap screw holds the cap on the rod but doesn't exert any tension. It doesn't clamp the cap and rod together tightly. But when turned with a wrench, the threaded end of the cap screw pulls down, stretching the rest of the cap screw. It exerts tension on the cap and rod, pulling them tightly together. So by tightening a cap screw or any other threaded fastener, you're actually stretching it, forcing it to exert tension on the parts it holds together. But the amount you stretch it is critical. It makes the difference between doing the job right and doing it wrong. For example, if you didn't stretch the cap screw on this connecting rod far enough, the lack of tension could allow the cap to start coming away from the rod, which would probably lead to an engine failure. Stretching a cap screw too far can cause problems also. Too much tension on the parts being held together like this could distort them. Over-tightening could strip the threads or even break the fastener. So what determines the amount of tension you should put on a fastener? First of all, you've probably noticed that the farther you stretch a spring, the more effort it takes. In general, for any elastic material, the more you stretch it, the more tension it exerts. Up to a point, that is. Tension increases until you reach the material's yield point. At the yield point, additional stretching will not increase tension. The yield point depends on the type of material being used. Stretching the material beyond its yield point actually weakens it. The tension it exerts decreases. That's what happens when you stretch a spring so far that it doesn't pull back to original shape. Finally, if stretched too far, the material will fail. To get the maximum tension and the greatest strength out of a fastener, you need to stretch it to or just slightly beyond its yield point. But it's very difficult to measure the stretch on a fastener while you tighten it. So the trick is to find some way of tightening it precisely without actually having to measure the tension directly. A torque wrench is normally used to tighten fasteners accurately. But what does torque have to do with tension? After all, torque is a rotational force. Expressed in mathematical terms, Torque equals force times radius. 
In practical terms, if you put 10 pounds of force on the end of a one-foot-long wrench, you're generating 10 foot-pounds of torque at the cap screw. But tension is what you're really concerned about, and tension in the fastener is exerted at a right angle to the torque you put on it with a wrench. How does a torque wrench measure tension in the fastener? To see how, imagine unwrapping the threads from a cap screw. The threads are nothing more than an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. The other threads, the threads the cap screw fits into, form an inclined plane also. So as you rotate the cap screw, the two inclined planes slide along each other and pull the cap screw down into its hole. As you keep on turning the cap screw to tighten it, you stretch it, creating tension. The tension presses the two inclined planes together with greater and greater force. The tension increases, and the friction between the two inclined planes grows, making it harder and harder for the planes to slide past each other. So the tighter you turn the cap screw, the more tension it exerts, and the more torque force it takes to turn it. In this way, torque is an indirect measurement of tension in the fastener, of how far the fastener has stretched. But since torque is an indirect measure, there can be some problems in using it. For example, what if there is dirt or debris on the threads when you install the fastener? That debris increases the friction between the two inclined planes formed by the threads. That extra friction increases the effort needed to slide them past each other, or in other words, to tighten the fastener. The extra friction throws off the relationship between torque and tension. As an extreme example, if you try to tighten a cap screw with rusty or bird threads, you could reach the specified torque level before the parts being held together even began to touch. That's why you should always make sure the threads are clean and well lubricated according to technical manual instructions before installing any fasteners. If the technical manual doesn't call for a specific lubricant, use regular engine oil. This will make your torque measurement a more accurate indication of tension in the fastener. Not using the correct lubricant can cause problems, too. If you use a lubricant that's more slippery than regular oil, like Never Seize, you'll reduce the friction between the threads. Again, that changes the relationship between torque and tension. Only in this case, you could stretch the fastener beyond its yield point before reaching the specified torque. Even if you clean and properly lubricate the threads on a fastener, the torque method may still be inaccurate. For example, your torque wrench may not be giving you precise measurements. Torque wrenches must be recalibrated after frequent use. Also, it's hard to get an accurate torque measurement when you must apply a large force to the wrench. It may keep you from getting a good look at the indicator on the torque wrench, and it may be hard to stop at the desired torque. So there are several reasons a torque wrench may not accurately measure the tension on a fastener. Debris on the fastener's threads, improper lubrication, a miscalibrated wrench, or a large torque requirement. In some cases, these inaccuracies are not critical, and you can use a torque wrench to tension a fastener. But in other cases, you must use a more accurate method for tightening fasteners. For example, the cap screws on connecting rod caps in some large engines need to be tightened very accurately. Why? Well, the cap screws must be tightened accurately so that they can be tightened equally. If one cap screw has more tension than the other, it will tend to carry more of the load. If the extra load is more than it was designed to bear, the cap screw could fail, taking the entire engine down with it. Cap screws with equal tension bear the load equally. Also, Modern engineering design makes fastener tension an important part of any system that has to take a lot of stress. You need to tighten the fasteners properly to get optimum performance from the machine. The torque turn method provides the accuracy you need in those critical applications. But you may wonder why it is more accurate. The first step, torquing, snugs together the fastener and the pieces it holds. It puts little or no tension on the fastener. Turning it, the second step, stretches the fastener and puts a precise amount of tension on it. 
Turning the fastener stretches it by a definite amount. For example, if the fastener had 20 threads per inch, one complete turn stretches it 1 20th of an inch. One quarter turn stretches it 1 80th or 12.5 thousandths of an inch. This amount of stretch produces exactly the amount of tension required to hold the parts together. And it doesn't depend on the amount of torque it took to turn the fastener that far. You don't need to use a calibrated wrench to turn the cap screw, and it's easier to give the fastener a lot of tension by simply turning it. In summary, fasteners don't simply hold parts together. They stretch when you tighten them, and the resulting tension clamps the parts tightly. The amount of stretch you put on a fastener is crucial. Too little stretch, and the parts may come loose. Too much stretch, and you may weaken or break the fastener. A torque wrench indirectly measures the tension on a fastener, but the torque measurement can be inaccurate. A torque wrench is accurate enough for most applications but some critical applications need more accuracy than a torque wrench can provide. So John Deere recommends that you use the torque turn method in those cases. That was a fairly complex explanation of why you should use the torque turn method. Fortunately, the actual method is a lot simpler. Let's say the technical manual calls for tightening this cap screw to 55 foot-pounds and then turning it an additional 90 degrees plus 10 minus 0 degrees. Make sure the cap screw is clean and dip it in engine oil. Use the torque wrench as accurately as possible and torque the cap screw to 55 foot-pounds. When you give the cap screw the additional quarter turn, we recommend that you do not simply try to eyeball it. Remember, the turn is what actually tensions the fastener and it must be very accurate. To get an accurate turn, Put one mark, A, on your socket, and then put another mark, B, 90 degrees clockwise from A. On 12-point sockets, 90 degrees is the angle from the notch in the 12 o'clock position to the one in the 3 o'clock position. On a 6-point socket, it's the angle from one corner to halfway on the next side. Put your socket over the cap screw and put a mark on the part next to mark B on the socket. Call this mark on the part C. Then turn the socket until the mark A is next to the mark C on the part. And that's all there is to it. If the technical manual calls for it, you can also use the torque turn method with other than 90 degree turns. Just mark the appropriate angle on your socket and perform the method as you've just seen it. The torque turn method is the most accurate method you have for tightening fasteners in critical applications. Your technical manual tells you when to do it and how to use the method, but now you also know why it's important to use it.